This team has been in it for the last four years. The team that is going to go in the Super Bowl. It's because they have a culture that's fantastic. A bunch of dogs in the locker room. And I think it's because they got some leadership at a position that is very important, which is center. This guy is awesome. Beard fantastic. Mm -hmm. Moments electrifying. Full on dude that you would want to have on your offensive line. Center for the Buffalo Beals, Mitch Morse. Yeah. What's up, dude? Tell us how we doing. Thank you for joining us. Have you always had a beard? Because it feels like in every photo I see, it is a proper beard hanging down pretty thick. Dude, well, so uh, the Morses don't have very big chins. So, like, it really ends, like, right there. You see that? Oh. So, if I don't have a beard, it just looks like a dick. Just like this. Oh. <laughs> Kind of goes from there. So imagine you wear uh, uh, the beard's a necessity. Yeah, a nice little tan turtleneck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And oh, then just go ahead and shave that thing <laughs> back. Whole body. Yeah, it'd be Not great. The morses just walk around town. All right, I love everything about it. We, uh, I just talked about the moments that you've had at center. And I think it's because the moments that get picked up nationally and are big time stories. For instance, this past year, you were part of the Hall of Fame photo, I do believe, of the year whenever you were consoling Trey White after the loss. And it's like, you look at this photo, and it's like, well, why did this win? Well, because this is like a perfect depiction of what a fucking NFL team is and what you hope NFL teammates are like. And then there's a, a play that we all remember from this past season where Josh Allen's getting into it a little bit, huh? A little late block, huh? Christian Wilkins, I'll push you back. Christian Wilkins said, nah, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And then all of a sudden, big boy comes rumbling in who's fighting for his quarterback. You are seemingly, uh, like, Best teammate of all time. Yeah. Is that something you focus on? Have the Morses always had no chins and been great teammates? Or how did you kind of find yourself in this role, you think? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, as a young dude in the league, uh, for me at least, like you get the older guys. And um, I feel like the older you are in the league, you can kind of be crass to younger dudes and uh, just kind of get in your kind of lane. And for me, I've always wanted to have a relationship with guys. Like I, I, for me, my biggest, like what, what I – hang my laurels on and I'm proud of is being a good teammate, being a good dude and being someone you can come talk to. Um, because I remember I, I have my own set of problems that I need to vent to my other guys too. So if, if there's ever an opportunity for me to just kind of be there for my guys or just have a relationship or just play a game of pool in the basement, like I just want to be your dude. Yeah, and that photo was from the DeMar Hamlin evening, which is like the most serious night a team has ever experienced, it feels like. So I apologize if we get it wrong, but nonetheless, like, in a moment of full chaos, yeah. in a moment of full emotional, I couldn't even fathom the up and downs there because how close a team grows, especially how close your team has grown. So to see the like pillar of strength, like uh, like it's a it's a big deal, and I appreciate that you have that view, and I'm thankful that we all got to get to see it. Go ahead, AJ. Now, watching that video, obviously, no, it was amazing. I think that's anyone that's a coach of a team would love to see that. Like, you want to see guys standing up for their quarterback, especially. But with Josh Allen, that has to, I would imagine that's a pretty easy thing to do to come to that dude's defense or help him because he's just this big monster that seems to rumble around the field. He's not scared to be physical. Like, he's one of the guys, isn't he? No, he's a homie, dude. Like, he, he just runs around out there like a lunatic. And, uh, you know, you, you want to do that for your quarterback position just in general, but he really is uh, just a A1 dude. Just – uh, just a kick-ass dude. And, um, you know, you see something like that, the Holy Spirit kind of takes over, and you run into the fray. Like, I'm a pacifist myself, right? Um, but something clicked, and, uh, you know, Christian Wilkins is a really good football player, and it's one of those things that, um, like, you, you right like right here, nothing really being said. It's just kind of it's my first time I've ever been in a fight, to be honest, and then I get hip-tossed, which was really fun. And then <laughs> um, I get up, and I think I'm going to swing, and then you realize, like, uh, it's – I don't want to get fined. Like, it's, this is a lot of dough. <laughs> but that being said, like Josh Allen is is the guy. They're a really good dude, and uh, that's, that's that's my people, man. So when you, when you see that, you just got to take care of them. So is everybody in the locker room awesome? Like, uh, Poyer comes on the show. He's awesome mm -hmm. for us. I, I assume the same thing over there, the way he talks about the team. Yeah. Josh Allen, awesome, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Von Miller. Hey, we've got a chance to chat with Von Miller, and obviously he joins you. He seems Awesome. Like, is McDermott. that it seem, McDermott's awesome? Bean seems yeah. fucking awesome. Every human we've talked to, and obviously it's our first time talking to you, we will assume because you immediately said your head is shaped like a penis <laughs> in your first answer. Yep. So we like, we're a big fan. Yeah. We are a big fan of yours or whatever. But like, is it the entire locker room is just awesome? And how vital is that, you think, to a team, uh, team success? 
Totally. I think you from the top to the bottom, uh, what they look for first and foremost is just what kind of dudes they got in the character in that locker room, which I think is uh, exacerbated certain times and also kind of a cliche answer uh, for a lot of organizations. But I, I kind of think they put their money where their mouth is in regards to finding good dudes at first and then, you know, kind of building them into good football players or just kind of valuing the personality first before football. And for the most part, I think the best football players have been around. There's some, there's some, uh, you know, there's some outliers, but usually good dudes. Yeah, it's a big deal. But sometimes stats get in the way. People, oh, this guy ran a four three, whatever. He would be, he's got to be great. Our system needs a fast guy. Yeah, but like he comes in here and everybody hates the guy. And then if he makes some friends. And then that spreads. It, that's like something they talk about, like being cancer in a locker room, and that's such a serious way to describe something. But whenever they're saying that, they're saying like, "Hey, all you need is just one, one turd to be in the wrong room." You know what I mean? You get one bad person in the wrong room, then all of a sudden that matriculates through that room, and if anything goes wrong, they start recruiting others into it almost, and then all of a sudden that little bamboo seed that you buried way down in there. That thing just takes off and it kind of takes over and changes an entire mindset. It is so vital. It honestly is so damn important. I'm happy to hear that Brandon Bean, who seems like a guy, yeah, definitely gets that the most. McDermott's awesome, huh? That guy. He's yeah, jocked. Is he jocked? He's jocked right now. Yeah, a little bit. He's he's a, he's a good dude, man. He. Uh, I mean, I think one of those things that when I first got here, he was trying to kind of figure out uh, how he wanted to. Uh, be a football coach as well as a leader of men and it's just kind of fun to see him grow uh, along with us in, in regards to just being a, a, just an awesome guy and uh, really cares about our character and us as people before being football players I think that was um, really the deal last year with DeMar right like so he was vulnerable his vulnerability to the team uh, really taking care of us and uh, really kind of focusing on our mental not only our faculties, but just where we were as a team, uh, understanding just the gravity and the severity of the situation and how everyone was going to kind of intrinsically take care of that and how they were going to have the timeline for guys coming back just to be mentally into playing a football game six days later. Uh, it was just cool, man, because he really cared about us as dudes first before football players. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't come in the coach's manual. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, it doesn't. I wanted to yeah, ask about that, like caring about you. Like, what's the old saying? They don't know. What, how much you care until you know no, whatever they, it is? They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, yeah. We Bam. Care. We're there here. you go. Why is that a weird – why is that well, – I guess why do we have to talk about it like, man, this is amazing. This guy cares about me. Why <laughs> Why can't that be everywhere? That's a good question, AJ. I think it's – you know, this league is transactional. You know, you, you really try to get the whole family atmosphere, right? Um, but that's hard to do, especially in a business, right? You preach, preach, preach. Let's make this a family and – and then in the end, you kind of, whether you feel like you know, business gets in the way or, you know, other kind of things that come about, I really do think that he truly puts us as people as a priority, where we are as our families. I mean, there's, if anything comes up with families, it's just, uh, it's that first, take care of that, and then football follow. And the same thing with being teammates. And camaraderie is such an important thing for him. I, I think OTA is for him, it's just like, Yesterday, canceled that we had a golf tournament. Like, it was just kind of a fun deal to get the guys out there. Who won? And, uh, Who won? I don't totally. I, I didn't. I, so it wasn't you. I, <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah, I didn't play at all. So it was fun. But you, uh, just, you, you, well, you just hung out, drove some carts, kept score? Well, so they can, yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm shitty. And so I don't <laughs> want to go out there like that. And I got two elbows that have been surgically repaired. And uh, it's just kind of a dumpster fire. But for me, like team morale, right? Like a, like a dude, I just want to. Guys have fun, make sure that everything's going well. Uh, high, a lot of high fives, uh, nice. handshakes, if, you know, passing out a few, you know, spicy Gatorades, what we call them, a few beers maybe. Why? Uh, go out there and just have a good time. Oh, okay. So you were boozing yesterday. All right. Okay. Like that. Hey. No, 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 no. No, no obviously, if you were, though. <laughs> yes. If you would have been Theory. boozing or whatever. That's that's an incredible – that's the Buffalo Bills right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. bingo. Like, hey, that's – think about how smart that is mm -hmm. at this stage of the game. With how many returners, you got a lot of people back, right? Am I wrong in thinking that? Yeah, you got... we, we, yeah we're very fortunate in that aspect. So everybody knows their shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're all here. Everybody's here. We're hanging out. Let's go ahead and build this. So this fall, we can go on a run for the ages. How much is that talked about or thought about, man? So close, right? So close. We are fucking so close up there in Buffalo. 
Yeah, dude. I don't know. Like every time someone asks me how we're going to be, I tell them, uh, I'll tell you in January. Like you, you go with these teams that you, you know, just in the past, where the teams that you think are going to make a run and they don't, or these teams like I don't know if we got it, and you make this beautiful run. Like we got the people, we got the camaraderie, we got the coaches, we got the returners, um, we got it all. It really is just putting it together and also timing of it, right? Like so. Um, it'll be the ebbs and flows of the season, injuries play a role. There's so many dependent variables that we're just hoping that those will line up and uh, we're just, we're partying at, at the end of the season, hopefully. Hell yeah. In the recipe, you're saying all the ingredients, it feels like we got them. In the building. Now, all you need is, and obviously this won't happen to anybody in the NFL this year. This is actually going to be the first year this mm -hmm. won't happen. Here we go. Okay, which is cool. Yeah, It's cool to think about. <laughs> but all you need is like an injury at like one position yeah. that potentially yeah. something happened. That's why what the Patriots were able to do for so long is like mind-blowing because the amount of luck or fortune that potentially had to go there or gates. Oh, true. All, all of the yeah. gates. Also part of it. All of the gates. Like but it gates. is it is like everybody just expects like, okay, yeah, you guys go win the Super Bowl. It's like all right, yeah. There's an added game now too, so we got even more room for fuck ups to happen. Thursday or something. flex. On a, yeah, how about the Thursday night flex? You like that? Hate that? What are your thoughts on it? it? It's just I don't get it. I really don't. Okay, hold on, because Jason Kelsey, right? He went on and said basically, like anybody that's against this, you know, they don't actually feel that way or something. He was pretty passionate about it because I think he knows. And he was bringing up the business side of it all, right? Like the amount of money that's possible for players and for teams and for everything in the NFL. Like this is something, Jason, I, it felt like, and we haven't asked him since, but it felt like right. he was like, we can do this for what the potential upside is almost. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on it? And obviously there's a lot of big men. Obviously you're, you're a fucking giant. You are, you, you are a big dude. I mean, six foot six is fucking massive. Dang. Center is a massive... Mm -hmm. That's a massive human being lumbering. So sometimes there's bigger bodies, from my experience, and it takes a little bit longer to potentially get the, get the train back rolling after a beatdown that is an NFL football game. So I'm excited to hear your thoughts, and that's why whenever I heard Jason Kelsey say what he said, I was like, damn, that's like the first time I've heard big guy almost go to the bat for Thursday Night Football, but the business, I think, and everything else that comes alongside of it is why he was saying it. First of all, Jason Kelsey, absolute savage. My absolute <laughs> dude. I mean, as, as a center, you watch guys and you try to kind of resonate with them or try to kind of copy what they can do, and he's just in a league of his own. So, and, and he keeps getting better with age, so I, kudos to him. Big fan of Jason. Um, I hadn't really thought about the business side. I, to the point, it's just for me, like it's about the dudes, like turnover, time. I, I guess there's a safe way to do it. And, if, and that might be an oxymoron just because Thursday night games are the absolute shits in general. For players, just the turnaround time. <laughs> um, the only good thing about that is that you can do, you can have those, if you strategically have them in the season, you can have those three or four days you can treat like a mini bye week, which is cool. Um, but you just see it. I, for me, I'm sure there's a business side to it. And, and the last thing I want to do is piss Jason off or say anything. No, no, no. I don't, I don't think you piss anybody that. off. Yet. That being, that being said, I just don't see it. And, uh, and, um, I, uh, I hate him with a passion. So uh, that that was seemingly the the take by every player, pretty much. Now, for me, obviously, you know this. My position, like most grueling, mm -hmm. uh, physically, mentally tasking. You know what I mean? Just so hard. So many car crashes. Week yep. in, week out. Yep. They get they go to meetings. I have nothing to do. Yep. What am I? That's hard. You know what I mean? It's yeah, tougher. That's very, very hard for me. You know? Fighting boredom. Oh, my God. It's brutal. All day. Have you ever thought about it? Oh, oh exhausting. Can't imagine. <laughs> exhausting. So the Thursday night games, I never had any, like, okay, I'm cool, man. Thursday, I'm practicing on Thursday anyways. I'm bombing balls on Thursdays. That's cool with me. We don't have to change a single thing for this. But every human I saw pretty much hated the Thursday night games. So that's why, like, it's going to two of them. It's going to two of them, I think, potentially four same teams. Yeah. They're going to start flexing them. That's going to become like, that's going to become a night, especially with, you know how much money Bezos, Bezos has all of the money. So like, they are definitely going to make that work, you know, Mitch? Listen, Tordal is a hell of a drug, yeah. right? The but best. like, that's a quick turnaround even for Tordal. Right? <laughs> that's, 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 you know, that's, I don't know, dude. I just don't, the money is there and I get it. Like higher powers that be understand the dollar signs. But for me, I'm just trying not to, you know, get my 20th concussion. 
and the turnaround is just like it's. <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't like it. Uh, tone is a question for you. <laughs> yeah, Mitch. Uh, Pat mentioned it. Six six, uh, and I looked it up. One of, if not the tallest centers in the league. And this is going to sound fucking stupid. Um, but has anybody ever said that at the center position, six, six might be a detriment Has like anybody ever said that, or is just being big, being big. And that's a good thing. No, that's a good question. I, I think for me, it was moving in. I got short arms that keep getting shorter with every surgery I get. And, uh, I, I would think it myself, like my senior, my, my, uh, my rookie year, I'm getting ran over by like Linval Joseph and all these dudes before you kind of figure out um how to use your leverage and as i'm falling back i'm like i'm, I'm too tall for this shit <laughs> and just getting drilled into this island but um no no i think if you can play you can play every person's uh you know physiological makeup kind of has pros and cons for different positions uh I, i've seemed to found a way to kind of go with it but that leverage battle is always something especially in the interior and at center so it's something that you're constantly working on and have to remind yourself but uh this league has a way of reminding you every so often how come those short arms guys always just they say hey listen you're in the middle yep. <laughs> you got aq ship because it's an island out there dude like those dudes are absolute savages on the side and these little things aren't doing <laughs> squat against a dude like chandler jones who can scratch his you know scratch you tie his shoe standing up so like it's just one of those things that um that, that got him inside to be could, honest. could you imagine i mean obviously you have and i've seen you you'd be in a much better spot than me but I don't think people fully comprehend like what the tackles are doing, how they're doing them, and what they have to kind of live up to while moving backwards. Yeah. So like you're fighting backwards while you're moving backwards, and then you got like some of the most gifted humans of all time, On maybe. Earth. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of all of all time, like six foot four, two fifty, two forty, four four, four three, like just yeah. six five, six six, even some of them, like and, and able to move faster than you and to touch the ground while they're sprinting, like some of the. And then if they just put that paw on you, your hands don't matter. Nope. Mm -mm. Like, oh, I'm gonna get my hands on. Is it, are you? I don't Boom. think so. <laughs> I don't. Know. Back in the day, you used to just hit people in the head. I guess that was the play. Yeah, uh, I mean, like just seeing Von Miller in practice when he when he's going, and I'm sitting out there watching these tackles just. You know, and they're doing a great job, but they're you know they're fighting for their life out there, right? Because Vaughn is just one of those special dudes, and and uh, I mean he'll twist in every side every so often. Your eyes get real big, um, <laughs> but it's just one of those just a dude like that, and and that might be, not be fair because he transcended the football game, of football Hall of Famer. But just seeing dudes like that out there, uh, it makes me very thankful to be inside. Yeah, well, the inside has other duties as well that you have to pick up. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're an incredibly intelligent human just by a few of the words that you've used in this uh, conversation. Also, you're an NFL center, so that's – what else would you be doing if you weren't a, a center in the NFL? Oh, Jesus. Um, it's a great question. I got my uh, degree in food and beverage, but that was mostly to get through college. And also just uh, the, the beverage part was really cool. I got there and did the hospitality thing, the hotel thing. And uh, just to go up from there, it, it was absolutely a nightmare. So – the whole food and beverage thing was really cool. Uh, you did an, an internship at Anheuser-Busch. And uh, so maybe like it's I'm not a very big drinker myself, but it's a very personal business and, and, and elastic demand. Like, high, you know, win or lose, you're drinking booze. Right. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. So it's just a very personal business. I, I really enjoy it. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens after football. I, uh, I have no idea. You have food. Are you eating that weird shit? The uh, you like enjoy eating that stuff that like uh, not very filling, but like super duper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no. no. I, I, to, to be honest, dude, my the food and beverage part, the food part, I know how to not get you salmonella. The, <laughs> Thank you. That's about the only thing I know how to cook your food, internal temperature. You, you'll be good. Uh, I got by the skin of my teeth, but really, it was really the beverage part. Like I, I think that's just a really fun deal, the uh, alcohol part of it. And um, well, what about the day. THC drinks? Have you? And now, obviously. What to yeah. each their own or whatever. That's going to become a big time business. I think just as somebody that has experienced. The dope drinks mm -hmm. in a couple different states, they are a delightful little treat. They are, you just, you just put them in a cup with some ice and it is your own cocktail there. I think they're going to get in there. I think all the beer companies are going to get in there too. I think, I think there's a. Yeah, there's so much, there's so much money to be made, Pat. Uh, I think it's wild. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that totally. Uh, cause my, I want, my mom's going to watch this and, uh, oh, no, say, no, not ask, ask me a few years, Pat. 
and uh, we'll be we'll be sauced up having a good time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mama That's Morse, so Mama Morse. Yeah. I'm talking about me, not obviously. <laughs> six no, months. no, no. I listen. I listen. I think it's kick-ass, dude. I think there's a lot of dough to be made, and it'll be interesting to see when the regulations come down on that how it's going to be distributed. Here we go. Uh, whoever can get the cornerstone on that is going to make a lot of money. Yeah. Ten four. Go ahead, AJ. Mitch, are uh, are O linemen the smartest guys in the NFL? You think as a position? That's a good. I, yeah, I think quarterback inherently. You just have so much on your plate. Not only is it the most important position, uh, you, you know, you're just hearing a play call. Like you get in the huddle and you have these quarterbacks that can really take command of a huddle, and they have these super long play calls. And you look at each end of you know, each position group that it, it ret- pertains to, and you think there's a hundred of these calls in a, in a game, right? Or you know, there's certain in, in a game plan. How do you remember all this? And uh, I would like to think we're the second smartest. But I, I don't think you can really put um, anyone near a quarterback. Yeah, I mean, some of those quarterbacks, though. Yeah. They make it look so easy. That's speculation, dude. I don't know. About <laughs> no, I'm saying they make it look so easy. I'm saying they'll make it look so oh, easy. No doubt. They make it look so easy. Like, Aaron makes it look so – like, whenever he's – when Aaron Rodgers is rolling, okay? And obviously the amount of study time it takes to break down what a fucking defense is going to do and also everything that your people are going to do – it's like that's a next level. Like I think some of these quarterbacks' brains are just like, and we, people don't even really comprehend it or appreciate it. You know what I mean? No doubt. First of all, Aaron didn't have to come to AFC East. That kind of a bummer. But yeah, what's that all about? What is that? Hey, dude, it's just it's the absolute poops. I don't, I don't know it, it is, just, isn't it? He had he had a good thing going on in uh, Green Bay, and I'll uh, say he really bummed us off. <laughs> that was a. Bad but that being said, there are some dudes <laughs> like that that really are, it just are on a whole different level. You hear a guy like Aaron talk, and it really is kind of fun just to see not only how his brain works, but when it pertains to football too, like he's just on a whole different spectrum. And when you have a guy like that at the helm, I, I think the Jets, you'll, you'll see him really take a big step this year because he's, he's, he's awesome. I got to watch Peyton work, obviously, and I was in rooms where I didn't understand a word that was being said anywhere, but I did know like the amount of preparation and study that's going into this, I don't think anybody has enough respect for or appreciate for, and especially at center. So we appreciate you joining us. I hope you're enjoying the hell out of OTAs. Uh, let's go win one out for Buffalo. Here you yeah. go, Mitch. Let's go win appreciate one for you, Buffalo. Have fun out there, man. Appreciate you guys. I really take. Is Pac-Man in there today? Uh, he is not. No. no. You know, in spirit though, what's going on? You want to? You, you know what we can? Uh, I got. Unless you got, you got one minute. Like, like, Pac-Man, first of all, awesome. Place. We got an hour sixteen. Yep. <laughs> hour sixteen at Love least it. at all this right. time. So dive right, in. So Pac-Man, Tell awesome me. dude. Love you, Pac. Um, my rookie year was 2015. We're I'm with the Chiefs, and it was our third game. It was my third ever football game. We had actually been to Green Bay. And gotten spanked on Monday Night Football, Hell yeah. and uh, we're going to Sunday. And the Chiefs, what they would do is they'd like, like two hours before the game. It wasn't required, but we'd go out and we'd stretch as a group. Probably so 25, 30 dudes go out there, and we're stretching. We're having a good time and kind of getting ready for the game. And Pac-Man walks uh, behind our area and just starts talking the craziest shit, chirping like twenty-five dudes, <laughs> and. Uh, and we're sitting there like this guy is it's the first it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Just the bravado you have to have to do that. And uh I mean it was my it was one of many welcome to the NFL moments. That's... And uh and just the the dude is not is awesome and I'm really glad he's on y'all's team because oh and by the way, congratulations on the new deal, guys. That is that's really awesome. Um dude, but, thank you. We appreciate yeah, the hell out of you for saying that. Yeah. And also And new dad and new dad, that's on fire, pal. Yeah. Dude. Life's good for you guys, so keep it rolling. Man. Hell yeah, it's, we're I'm very lucky. We're very thankful and appreciate you following along with our story. That Pac and then also <laughs> thank you for telling that Pac Man yes. story. Yes, that Pac Man story is awesome. <laughs> Did he have headphones <laughs> on? Did he have headphones on? Take him out. I, you know, it's one of those things. I didn't want to make too much eye contact. I'm a rookie. I'm just kind of turning around, seeing it. Yeah, he had like one on. You know, the one on, but the one kind of off. So he could listen to his music, but still hear if anyone chirped back. And uh, he went after it. And then they beat the brakes off of us. <laughs> it was it was game, set, match for the guy. It was it was just a fun. It was it was really one of those fun experiences you get to think back. And I get to tell my kids one day. Dude, he used to just catch my punts and warm-ups. You know how, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, he used to do that. Yeah. Like, our guy would be back there, and then he would just slip in and just, like, catch one or whatever. And it would always be a big scene. Like, he's not allowed to do that. He's not allowed to be catching <laughs> the butts. It was yeah, like, he didn't. Who's going to tell him? You can tell yeah, him. go over there. Yeah, if I tell like, all right, Pac, you're not going to do that. Uh, he will catch every one of them. Yeah. What are not, uh, we are lucky he's in here, man. Off yeah. air. Just the shit that just comes out. The best. It's fantastic, as are you. We appreciate you, man. Have a great offseason. Thank you for having us on, fellas. Take it easy. Hell yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Mitch Morse. Yeah!
Savage. He was awesome. Yes. Yeah, it just sucks, like, as a Patriots fan, because all the Bills guys are so cool.